The Horizontal Machining Center can be one of the most productive machines in any manufacturing shop. Today we're going to talk about the fastest horizontal Akuma has ever produced. Hi, I'm Wade Anderson, Product Specialist Manager for Akuma America Corporation. With me today is Matt Abel, our Lead Machining Center Application Engineer. Matt, let's talk about the machine to start with, with what I consider to be the heartbeat of any machining center, and that's the spindle itself. I know our previous generation machines, we had a 15K Cat 40 or a 20,000 RPM Cat 40 spindle option. This newest generation, we're bringing in a lot more power with a Cat 50 Big Plus spindle. Tell us a little bit about what that means. Sure, so the Cat 50 option with this machine as we see it right now is 12,000 RPM. It's 33 kilowatts of power and 302 newton meters of torque. Excellent. So when we talk about a big plus, I know that's dual taper, dual contact. So you've got contact on the taper, you've got contact to the face of the spindle itself. Why is that important to customers? Why does that matter? Well, in a, a long application where tools are sticking out longer, that allows the tool to be more rigid and it becomes more accurate because okay. you have the dual contact, the taper, and on the face. All right, so every time that tool makes a tool change, it comes into a known position in the Z-axis. That's correct. So this machine is all about speed. So we're combining power, speed, and accuracy. I know the B-axis, this is a completely redesigned B-axis in this model. What have we done different to this machine to be able to increase the speed of that B-axis indexing? So we have added a cam roller gear to the movement of the B-axis. Okay. So that provides really smooth operation. The cam roller gear itself has less than a micron clearance between the rollers and the cam. And we're going from zero to 90 in Under what? a second. Under a second, fantastic. Some other things we've done to speed up this machine, we increase the jerk rates on the machine itself as well as the acceleration rates. What kind of acceleration do we see on this? So in the X and Z axis, we're at 1G, okay. and at Y, we're at 1.1G. Let's talk about the shower coolant and the chip flow itself. We're putting in a more powerful spindle. We're increasing the, the speeds of the machine itself. We can get a lot more chip removal rates. All of that is meaningless unless I can get the chips out of that work enclosure. What all have we done to be able to increase our chip flow out of the machine into the chip bins in the back? Okay, to start with, we have a one-piece Z-axis weight cover. So instead of using telescoping weight covers, mm -hmm. we are using a one-piece Z-axis. Okay. That eliminates the chips from getting underneath the, the weight covers and causing downtime. We've also added saddle flush coolant, top shower coolant, and we also have curtain coolant on the X and Y axis to eliminate any jamming of chips in, in the, in the weight right. covers. Let's talk a little bit about the control itself. I know there's some features like the speed up function where in the past you would have to have a, a really highly educated engineer to be able to get into the control, get down into the parameters itself to fine tune and optimize the cutting process. Now we've moved this to more of a graphical interface yes. and made it a lot more simple to be able to access. Can you talk a little bit about that? So we have a easy set button on this for our cycle time reduction. Okay. Our cycle time reduction eliminates unnecessary movement in the machine and allows the machine to run faster cycle time reduction. So that's a perfect example where if you've got a bolt hole pattern, for an example, if you're an automotive production house and you're drilling a lot of bolt holes, instead of everything going up to exact positions, you can loosen up that tolerance and round those positions over and get from hole to hole much faster. Then I heard you mention about a different home position. What does that do for an operator or the cycle time itself. So as the machine is currently configured, the Z axis will move all the way back before this will do a tool change. So we can move our safe position closer, yes. do tool changes so we don't have as much dead time of unnecessary axis motion. That's correct. All right, that is called up in a part program as well, right? So once you save that, you can define where your new home position is, save that to the part program, then call that up later in, in a G code type yes, format, correct? Absolutely. Let's talk a little bit about the APC itself. So we move around to the front. This APC is very ergonomically friendly. So it's at a really good operator height to be able to access it. We have a foot pedal access to unlock the Lazy Susan or the B axis, if you will, to be able to spin this around. Tell us a little bit about pallet pools. What kind of options do we have that's available to take this from a two APC, which gives you a lot of unmanned operation by having a pallet changer, what happens when we go to a six, eight, 10, 12 pallet pool? So that's a great question and a great thing about this is it's a very affordable option. 
You can add a six, 10, or 12 pallet pool system to this. And what that does is allows you to queue up the machine to run lights out. So okay. lights out, you queue up six pallets, you queue up 10 pallets, you queue up 12 pallets, and you go home. All right. And the machine will run, and when it's finished, it'll sit here and wait for you. This can also be easily added to a FMS system. Yeah. So a pallet pool typically would be a single machine with one pallet pool connected to that machine. We go to an FMS system, we would stack up multiple of these machines with a long pallet system, if you will, a racking system that would feed the entire production system. Sure. All right, let's move around to the ATC. Let's talk about uh, some of the new ATC options that we've got on this Series 2 machine. I'm gonna open up this panel, swing this open, allow people to have an inside look. This is our latest generation machine with a disc style ATC. What, is, what are we looking at for a tool to tool time on this? Tool to tool time is under a second. Okay, fantastic. So in a, say, an automotive type production house, again, where speed is the most important consideration that you get into, a disc type ATC gives us the fastest tool change allowed on, on a machine like this. But let's say we're jumping into a pallet pool system or into an FMS system. Do we have other options available to take us into uh, larger tool capacity? Sure, so we have a belt system for a 100 tool. This is a configured in a 60. Mm -hmm. uh, we also have a matrix system that goes all the way up to 266 tools. These are extremely fast tool change times. Some of the things that I noticed when we open this up, there's a lot of sheet metal that's been added. So any kind of chips, coolant contamination, goes straight into a coolant trough, that gets pumped back into the coolant system itself. Matt, I appreciate your time today talking about the new MB5000H Mark II. I appreciate you guys coming on this virtual tour with us. Please make sure you check out all the other videos available by Akuma.